Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Low Spec Labs. On today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to join your Proxmox host to an Active Directory domain, right? Uh, this one's actually pretty simple, right? Um, it's just you have to understand some terms and terminology. Uh, it did take me a couple days the first time I did it for me to figure it out, but after a little bit of reading, I realized it was about a five to 10 minute process, maybe 15 minutes tops. So if you've been following along with these videos, I'm gonna walk you through how to join your Proxmox host to a Active Directory domain. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go into your Proxmox host, right? And you're gonna wanna enable some form of remote, uh, remote control or remote administration. So on the last video, we made our domain, right? On this video, we're gonna make a user account. It's generally not suggested that you uh, basically do your authentication through a user account. So we're gonna create a couple of different user accounts. Let's go ahead and get started here. Okay. So let's open up a couple tools here. Active Directory, Users and Computers. Mm -mm. Okay, let's give it a second here. So in here, you'll see a user's folder, all right? First thing I like to do is create a new OU. Uh, this is just for my own Windows administration experience, right? Um, the difference between an OU and a folder right here is that in Windows, at least, OUs can be used to um, assign GPLs, right? So we're gonna create an OU called Domain Users. Okay. All right, cool. So after we create our OU called Domain Users, we're gonna create a new user. We're gonna call this guy PVSync. PVSync. Next. Okay, user cannot change password. So this is basically a service account, right? And the entire purpose of this account is just to have a user to sync with our Proxmox um, hosts, right? So. Uh, I'm gonna give this its password. Password never expires. Next. Finish. Okay. So after that, you then need to open up a Windows Active Directory shell. Or not a Windows Active Directory shell, but a Windows PowerShell. Okay, guys. So after you type in get AD user, Right, what you want to do is you want to copy this information down onto a notepad, right? Um, I'm going to copy it down onto a notepad off screen, and I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this info as needed. So give me just a second here. Let's see. Okay. Okay, cool. So I got this right here copied down into a notepad off screen, right? And we're going to go ahead and we're going to continue. So remember this DN info, all right? So CN is your container name, this is your user. OU is your folder, right? Uh, DC is two and DC is local. So let's go here, add. First thing first, you wanna click data center. You wanna go ahead and scroll down to permissions. Click that little folder and you'll see realms. Click add, active directory server. My realm is two dot local, so I'm calling the realm two. My domain is two dot local. The server that this domain points to is at, hold on, let's go back here. Okay, 081, so let's go here. So, we're gonna point this to 192.168.0.81. 
call this round two, call this two dot local. All right. Go ahead and leave SSL unchecked. Go to sync options. All right. So your bind user is going to be your username. All right. Bind password is going to be the password for that account. All right. So in my case, let's be using sync. Password is the password. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. All right. Oh, there we go. Actually, I got this quite wrong here. So what you want to do is your bind user is this. Okay. So your bind user is CN OU equals domain users or whatever. You know, it's probably just going to be users. VC equals two, DC equals local. Okay, go ahead and give it a bind password of the password for the account. You can leave this empty for email attribute. You can leave this empty for a group name attribute, right? So what you want to do is you want to sync users and groups for scope, and you want to sync the full scope, right? Basically, when it comes here to purge, basically, does it mean does it clear out old users? Go ahead and click none. Enable new users, yes. And click add. Right? Then you have to test the sync. So, what you can do is you can come here. Right? Click the sync button. Click on your round. Sync. Sync users and groups. Purge ACLs, yes. And then hit preview. Right? And if you got everything right, you'll see your Proxmox host popping up with this right here. You'll see like these different group names, right? I like to just go ahead and sync all groups. Um, in a production environment, you'll probably want to filter it down, probably create a group called PV users, right? And then you can filter just that group down. So only PV users have access. Um, I'm actually going to have, I'm actually going to go through and create another video after this about permission structure where I'll go into more detail, but this is just a top level overview on how to quickly get your Proxmox host connected to an Active Directory domain to start testing things and playing around. So let's proceed. Let's hit sync. Cool. So once you've hit sync, you should be able to go here to users, right? And in users, you'll see I have a user called PVE sync, right? So let's go ahead and let's test this user and let's see if we can log in. Remember this interface has a bunch of crap here. You know, it's got like our data center, it's got some VMs, it's got the Proxmox host. When we log out and we type in user PV sync, and then we type in the password for the PV sync user, and then we click the tube round, right? So when you log in, you'll see you can't see anything, right? And that has to do with Proxmox permissions, okay? So just to quickly give this domain user permissions, we're gonna have to log back in. So Linux Pam, log back in of our user account or our root user, okay? Once we've logged back in of our root user, we then go back to PV2 or data center. We go back to users, right? And we'll create, we'll click permissions, right? And we'll edit the permissions on this. So we'll click edit. Hold on here. Let's see, users, PV sync add. No. Hold on. Okay. So if you look down here, you'll see our PV sync user, right? And um, after we logged back in earlier, you know, we weren't able to get in and get access. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and give this PV sync user permissions. What you have to do is click the top level permissions icon. Go ahead and click add, right? As just a rough overview, we're going to add group permissions, but that's honestly not how I suggest you do it. Uh, I would say create pools, assign your pools to groups, and then, uh, you know, assign group permissions, right? But what you can do just to quickly give you a user that has full level access is click the low level path, right? So these control basically which, uh, this control is basically what VMs, you know, what parts of the Proxmox interface you get access to, 
if you click the base path right here, it gives you access to everything, right? And honestly, I always suggest you um, filter based on groups, right? Uh, if you have to go in and you have to filter based on like node pool or slash storage, you know, you're kind of, I'm not going to say doing it wrong, but you're not doing it optimally. You're not doing proxmox permissions in a way of double scale, right? Um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and let's click PVE sync. All right, and we want to give this user admin access. Now, when we log out, and we go ahead and we log back in here. Oh. Okay, cool. All right, so now we're logged back into this PVE sync user, right? And you can see this PVE sync user right here is actually that uh, it's PV sync at two right basically it's uh, authenticating against the domain and I was able to log in with that domain password right I didn't have to change anything and look I even have console access back to my DC All right so that was just a quick video guys on how to get your Proxmox host connected to your active directory domain right I just felt like it'd be a pretty useful video for anyone out there who was trying to do this um, the next video I'm going to show you is how to filter permissions down, basically how to limit permissions both inside of, basically how to set up your active directory properly, so you have groups and users uh, inside of Proxmox, right, and then how to also assign Proxmox permissions properly so that your users actually have the access rights they need to have access to, right. So when you're dealing with this, remember there's two sets of permissions. There's the Windows Active Directory permissions in groups or like users in groups. Um, and then there's also the Proxmox, you know, permissions and users and groups, right? And the cool thing about this is I can create just a basic user inside Active Directory um, right here, right? And this basic user basically uh, doesn't have access to anything other than what's on the Proxmox host, right? I mean, technically it does have access to the DC, right? But we can limit this so it doesn't have access to what's on the DC. We could create just like a lab VM or a developer VM, right? And they'll assign that user just to that one VM. So we'll continue from here. Proxmox is a great way to like kind of play around and learn more about security and permission structures. So we'll go from there, guys. Thank you for watching this video. As always, like and subscribe. Please comment and let me know what I can do to improve or update these videos. You know, if there's any pieces of information you want clarification on, I might include in the next one. Bye, guys.